بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد With the grace of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal we have come to the end of our discussion on Surah Al-Fatiha not that we were able to cover every aspect of the Surah not that we feel content and satisfied that we've delivered what was necessary in terms of the contents of Surah Al-Fatiha. We have, I have this, this, this sense of, um, of somewhat, uh, some, somewhat guilt that probably I've not done what I was supposed to have. And as students, I do not want you to feel satisfied that now you've, you've looked at every aspect of Surah Al-Fatiha. There is a lot more in this surah which we were not able to cover. There is إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Within even that, that, that verse, that is so rich. It teaches us the, 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 the procedure of dua. Normally, if you, want, if you want your duas to be accepted, bring it after an act of ibadah. Bring it after an act of charity. Bring it at an occasion where you have tried to serve your Lord. Thereafter, if you lift your hands in prayer, your prayers are likely to be accepted. After having performed an act of kindness, after purely for the sake of Allah, after having done some ibadat, after having recited some Qur'an, after having, having made a sacrifice in the name of Allah. So an act, something that you've done to please your Lord, Thereafter, if you bring a dua, that is likely to be accepted. Where do we learn that from? We learn that from إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ That we say, our Lord, you alone we worship, and from you alone we seek help. So, and, and there's a lot more within the surah. But we tried to do, we tried to, to cover as much as we were able to. So now we are moving on to Surah Al-Baqarah. But just before we move on to Surah Al-Baqarah, there is something else that we want to do. And that is something, it is ho hopefully, it will benefit us. It will broaden our understanding of the Qur'an Kareem. And it will, give it, it will give us a sense of gratefulness, a sense of uh, gratitude, a sense of appreciation that the Qur'an that Allah has given to us as the last revelation, in, indeed it is the last revelation. Indeed, it is richer. Indeed, it is a benefit. It, it is a gift to mankind, which is, which, which is there to benefit every individual without any prejudices, without any restriction. Without, it's not confined to a regional territory. It's not only for the Arabs. It's not only for one tribe. It's not only for one uh, people of one, uh, one, one, one heritage or one culture. This is something that is for, for everyone, across generations, across regions, across time. This is a gift for mankind. How do we understand that? One way of doing that is by looking at, by, by comparison may not be the right word, but by having a glance over the other divine kitabs. As believers, we have this yaqeen, this, this, this belief, this understanding that the Qur'an is not the only kitab, not the only book that was revealed by the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. In fact, it comes after a number of kitabs, number of books that were revealed by him. The Qur'an even says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا uh, that there is وَإِمْ مِّنْ قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا خَلَافِهَا نَذِيرٍ every, every region had their own warner, their own prophet. So, Throughout generations, the Almighty Allah did not abandon any of His creation. Mankind, wherever they, are, they were, whether they were in the north or in the south, east or the west, they were guided by the Almighty Allah. They had their guides, they had their prophets, they had their warners. People came to educate them. And, and the Almighty Allah spoke to those people and they were the messengers of God, messengers of Allah. Lately, this was restricted into... The, in, in, into, into the, in the progeny of and into the family of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, 
because of a very unique service that he performed to the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, the way he, he acted, that was very special. And that made him above the else. And the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, as a reward, bestowed upon him this, this special grace of his that the future prophets were to come only, they were only to be in, 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 his, in his progeny. But prior to him, there were prophets in every region. So, as us believers, we, we have some books that we, we can look at as the revelation of the Almighty Allah Azza wa or originally, or to or the, the, the revelation of the Almighty Allah Azza wa their origin lies in the divine. These are kitabs that may not be as they were revealed. They may not be as pure and intact as they were at the time of revelation, but somehow their origin is with, with, with the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is mentioned in the Quran Kareem. The Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned that he had revealed a Quran, he, he had revealed a Furqan to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and a Kitab to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam and, and, and Sayyidina Dawud alayhi salatu was salam had scrolls and, and another Prophet, Suhuf Ibrahim, he had scrolls. So there's mention that Allah Azza wa Jal spoke to and, and guided other, other communities and he revealed books on, on, the, on the other messengers. So he revealed kitabs on the other, other messengers. We have some of them available to us, the Bible, the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. As Muslims, we have respect for the kitab. We have respect for the book. We, we, we do not treat the Bible even with, 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 with the way, in the way that it is at the moment. We would, not, we would, not, we would be respectful to, to the Bible. We would not just throw it around. We would not treat it with, in, in a disrespectful manner. Yes, we know that this kitab has now been, has an updated version that the Quran, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made such that he himself has preserved it. So every letter of the Quran is preserved, unlike the Bible. And we, we, we know that through the Quran, Allah azza wa jal has changed the commandments that he, he, he updated them, is maybe the better word, of the commandments that he had given to to, them, to, to mankind or to people when the Bible was revealed. However, there is a kitab which is read by people, our neighbors. We live in a, in a community uh, in Scotland, in, in the UK, um, in, in a community where, where Islam is not the main religion. Islam is, Muslims are in, in, in a minority, Muslims are minority, and they're one of the minorities, and there are other faiths practiced in, in our vicinity, in our neighborhood, and in, 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 our, in, in our society. So my, our children, when they go to, to school, they, they rub their shoulders with, with, a, with, 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 a, with a boy, with a girl, with, with, some, with, with a classmate who is not necessarily a Muslim. And he might have read the Bible in the morning. He might have read, uh, uh, he might have read Vedas in the morning. He might, he might have read another kitab in the morning. So they, they, they then, they meet together, they, they share their experiences. And sometimes they, they, they have, uh, they, they try and learn from one another and they, 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 they make impact and they, take, they receive impact. So they are influenced and they influence others. So that's the way our society is, uh, the, the, the social life is structured and the way it goes on. So, and it not only doesn't only happen to the children, it happens to the adults as well at, at places of work, at universities, um, at other events, um, in, in other social gatherings. People do sit together and they do talk about it and they, look at, they do look at what, each, what one another people have. There's no harm if we look at something and look, look at the Bible and see that what is it, the opening chap chapter of the Bible? What is the, the first chapter of the, the Bible, first few verses of the Bible and see what is in the Quran? Maybe we'll be able to better appreciate the Quran. The idea is to appreciate the gift that we have. So if we... Let us, before we carry out that, um, that we do that experiment, we do, we, we, we do that task, let us now briefly have a glance over what, what was it that, that, that we found in Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha introduces the Creator, the Almighty Allah Azza wa to mankind. So he tells us, who is Allah? Rabbul Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm din So, Ma'bud, Musta'an. We worship him. We, we, he, he, he supports us. We, 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 we ask, we fall back onto him. So, introduces the creator to man. That's what Surah Al-Fatiha does. It also elaborates on his qualities and attributes along with describing the heavenly realm to mankind. So, mankind aspire to lift up and above the base desires and bestiality. So, we, 
it, it, it teaches us as human beings that we are above and beyond the other creature, uh, creatures that occupy this planet. So there are animals that live side by side, there are insects, there are birds that, that, that where we are, there are plants. Um, these are all creation of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. But if a man, if a human being sits with an animal, even though they both are creation of Allah, but the goal and the, and the reach and the potential of man is far greater than the most intelligent of the animals. So human beings must not behave in a selfish manner. The animal, all he cares about is its survival and how to reproduce and how to survive in, in its in habitat or wherever, wherever it is. That's what the, the animal's major concern is, how to, 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 to feed itself and how to feed its children. As human beings, our goals and our ideals are a bit greater, much higher. And those are اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ That grace of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jalla, its pursuit and trying to please the Almighty Allah and trying to, trying to understand the, the purpose of the creation and win over the pleasure of the Creator. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ Save ourselves from His wrath, from His anger. وَلَلْضَالِينَ And to reason properly and not reason in a manner that will make us err on the, uh, and that that will that that will cause us to go stray from the right path so that is what we learn from the surah it aims to as a divine book should create holiness purity contentment and lofty moral standards holiness of the of the creator life is not about evil life is not about it's, it's more it, it makes you interested in life it makes you interested in everything that, 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 that goes around. The Supreme Being, the, the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, is presented as the goal in life. All I want, everything revolves around the Almighty Allah. You grace whomever you like, and you, people fall from your grace, and people fall from your favor, and they, they, they are doomed because you, they, they made you upset, and they abandoned your path. Allah is the goal. And as the most desired, desired ideal, everything else is secondary. This you can see, which now, when we look at the other books, we can try and see if, if there's something similar there to find. It, the Qur'an, as a divine book should, reminds man of his destiny, his accountability before Lord on the Day of Judgment. Maliki Yawmiddin, dear man, you are here, you, 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 you possess a lot today. You may be very happy and you may feel in control. But your control is temporary and your control will soon diminish. It will soon, soon come to an end and you will lie at the mercy of, of, of your Lord. It helps him recognize the feeble and mortal nature of this earthly existence and serves as, a, as an awakening for him to show regards to, to the needs of his soul and the spirit. Something that we said earlier as well. So it, it is a call for to wake up and and realize who you are, where you are, what you're doing, and where you're heading to. Remember, Rabbul Alameen is feeding you. He is not only feeding the, the, the planet, the, the everyone else, but Rabbul Alameen, he is feeding you as well. He's in control. And he is Rahman and Rahim. You do not need to be scared that, oh, if he has control, what he's going to do, he is very most compassionate and the most merciful. If you, you may not be able to make as good choices for yourself, as he is going to do for you. So rather than becoming alarmed that I'm not in control, you get a sense of, a sense of peace and sense of assurance that the, the fact that the Almighty is in control should not make you worried. This is something in your best interest. Now let us look at what, the, what these kitabs that we have, the, the, the Bible, what does he have? I have Torah to start with, and this is the Old Testament of the Bible, the, the first part. Um, King James Version, which is quite popular, viewed as the most authentic, most verified, um, and normally is, is, is the preference of, of many. From there, I've taken this text, and the start of it, I'll read to you without any, uh, any comments in between, and I'll let you think in light of what we looked at Surah Al-Fatiha, what, what, what benefits do we, do we get here? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. What I've read to you is the eight verses from the opening of the Bible. And the summary of it, maybe, is in Rabbul Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise be to Allah, the the, the sustainer of the worlds. Now there, not Khaliq al the creator of the worlds. The creator, it's not about the creator of the universe. It's the one who having created it, sustains it, manages it and keeps it going and looks after it. That's all in Rabb al So, this, what we read here introduce, it makes clear that Allah is the creator. This is true. There, is no, there are no two, two opinions on it from, from, in terms of the Islamic perspective. But then Allah is, it talks about the detail, how he did it. And we're not going into to the fact that how, well, if, if, about, about, the, about the verification. That's not our, our aim. We are not, we're not being critical here. We are just looking at, this, this text presents to us some ideals. And Surah Al-Fatiha has presented some ideals. And say, try to understand that when Allah Azza wa Jal, if Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the Torah, and then Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the Quran, how is it that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the likes of Surah Al-Fatiha will not be found in any other kitab? You will not find it in Torah, you will not find it in Zabur, you will not find it in Injil, you will not find it even in the Quran elsewhere. Surah Al-Fatiha is a very rich surah. This is why it's recommended to be repeated 20 times a day, almost in, in every prayer. 20 times is minimum. And in your daily prayers I'm talking, talking about, um, there's more if you're doing sunnat and nawafil, um, and if you're doing extra tahajjud, then you would be repeating the surah a lot more many times. So you're repeating the summary of the Qur'an al-Kanim over and over and over and over again. But, and then we've just looked at the Bible, the Old Testament, and tried to understand if this was a match with Surah Al-Fatiha, I will not say anything. I will let you decide. That look at the, the, the contents of Surah Al-Fatiha and you have a text here. Then we move on to the other, uh, after Torah, the Old Testament, we move on to the New Testament. Now the New Testament which was given to Sayyidina, Sayyidina uh, Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, as we understand, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, wa atainahu al-Injil, the Almighty Allah Azza wa says, we granted him the, 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 the Injil, the, the, the Gospels. Now, the Gospel, um, again, as it's well known, it has about four different versions. But the, the, normally, if you look at, if, if we do pick, pick up a, a, a Bible, uh, we pick up the, the Bible, in fact, um, we see that um, up the, the first one amongst the four is the one that comes from St. Uh, Matthew's. So St. Matthew... He's, the Gospel according to St. Matthew starts with, I'm going to read about eight verses here, even though I've got a lot more. Um, and all he talks about is the lineage and the family tree of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Is- Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat, and then it goes all the names. I am concerned that I may not pronounce these names properly. So because of that, I'm not reading it through. But this is a text which is full of names from the verse number 1 until verse number 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon and to Christ are 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Now this, the birth of Sayyidina Isa is mentioned as 
in, in the verse number 18, 17 verses talk about the family tree of Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. People have commented, the scholars have commented, that is that really, a, again as I said, I'm not going to, this is not my task, we're not, we're not carrying out a comparison here. We are talking about Surah Al-Fatiha, the richness of it, and we are just trying to, as students, having a, paying a glance over the other kitabs and, and the other divine books, um, and see in the, in the, in the existing uh, in the structure that we have, um, whether, well, what's, what's, what, what is it that, that these, these books have? So over here is the, is the lineage and the family tree of Sayyidina, Ibrahim, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. There's no mention of Allah Azza wa Jal, the creator the, 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 of the universe, his, his attributes, presenting him as the ideal, and making this bond between him, between, between a man and between, uh, between Allah Azza wa Jal, trying to lift man and trying to and attempt to connect him with his creator. We, don't, we do not see it here. The family tree is usually describing how a family tree is something that pe people are good at. People themselves can do it and they do not necessarily need a divine revelation for it. This is something that, that, that people know their own family trees. Now you go on Google and type in your surname and you're likely to get who your ancestors are, all that information. And if you are lucky, if you go to to, to, to the archives and you might even be able to find out who your grandparents were, what, what were their names, where they lived, and what was what was their what, what, what was their, their way of life. This is something that human beings can do without divine intervention. But if the divine chooses to do so, then nobody's there to stop it. If Allah Azza wa wants to talk about someone's family tree, then we can't say that you Allah that, 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 that this is something we can manage by ourselves and you do not need to interfere. So I'm not saying that this can't be a divine revelation. And I'm not saying that um, Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, this, this is something that, 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 that has been added to it. That's not my comment. My comment is that Surah Al-Fatiha, the richness that it has, we are looking at the, at the opening of the, of, of, of the Bible, the New Testament, and we see that none of it is present here. In fact, the focus to, is totally on, onto something else. Um, the, the Christian scholars will have their reasons for it, and we, as I said, this is not. We're not debating. We're not. We're not criticizing anyone. All we are doing is that we've looked at Surah Al-Fatiha. We've looked at the opening of the New Testament. We've looked at the opening of the the Old Testament, and then we're going to move on to Zabur. Now, Zabur, the way it's widely understood, is the Book of Psalms, which is which is included in the Bible, and this somewhat talks about the the. Some, somewhat, it talks about virtuous way of life and the virtuous person. It says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate by day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knew the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. In terms of praising the righteous way of life and the righteous people. Wonderful, phenomenal. But righteous people presented, there are two, two ways of presenting them. One way is, الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ O oh Allah, you favored them. It was your grace that they got. And you, 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 you chose them, you, you, you helped them, you guided them. They, they humbled themselves before you and they were rewarded, they were awarded. Unlike those who did not humble themselves and they earned your wrath. Unlike those who tried to totally rely on their reason without relying on the, on, 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 on the divine guidance, they erred and they made a mistake. Rather than, so there is a mention of, a godly, of godly people. But as, as people were through praising those people, ultimately they praise in such manner 
that the praise ultimately lifts to the Creator. So the focus thoroughly from, a, from the beginning until, until the end remains on the Creator. He is presented as the goal to the reader. He is presented as the master, as someone, uh, the being that the individual must aspire to gain proximity with, not praising the person for his, his, his own uh, decision to, to, be, to be a righteous person. Because he may not remain righteous for, for too long if he loses the divine protection. If he becomes self-content, then shaitan may again interfere. Inna shaitan lakum adu. Shaitan is your enemy. And the, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, mentioned quite clearly, no one will enter Jannah except through the grace of God. And his amal and your actions will not take you to Jannah. It, it is the, the support and the protection of, the, of God the Almighty that will take you to Jannah. His grace will take you to Jannah. So that feeling of arrogance and that feeling of, of self, uh, uh, self nobility and self purity and that, 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 that does not arise for, 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 for the someone who reads Surah Al-Fatiha. So there is something in, 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 in the book of Psalms. But again, there's no mention of the Day of Judgment. Why should a person be pure? And by not being pure, other than these worldly benefits, what happens in the hereafter? There's no mention of the hereafter here either. So at least not clear enough for someone to, 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 to pick on it straight away. So these are, these are, these are things that, that we find in, in the book of Psalms. And that's what we learn from here. That's, that Surah Al-Fatiha again has something which is so comprehensive. And from each dimension, it seems to be so perfect and gelled together as, as, as a bigger picture. It's an amazing surah. Look at Rig Vedas. This is the, the looking at the Hindu tradition. And Hindu tradition is quite ancient. It predates uh, the, the, so the, even the Bible, according to how, how, how historians view it. But its preservation is there's a big question mark about it. I, don't, I wasn't even sure if I should, should have added Rig Vedas here. Because Rig Vedas or the Hindu tradition, there are, there's a debate about their commitment to monotheism, Tawheed. Many scholars are of the opinion that Hinduism is not a monotheistic religion. It's not about Tawheed. They do not believe in one God or the unity of God. They talk about, they are polytheist uh, uh, belief. They are polytheist religion. It believes in more than one deity. And they try and show equal devotion to every one of them. Or somewhat, they, they worship everyone in different uh, areas uh, and, and, and different, uh, the, 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 diff, diff, different sectors of life. Here it starts with a hymn. And here it's, it praises the uh, uh, praises um, agony. Agony refers to the fire. Agony is one of the deities that, they, that, uh, that is worshipped. Um, and Rig Veda, Rig Veda is out of 121 mantras, 37 are to praise agony. It's a very important figure, very important deity. Uh, most others are to praise the sun um, and the other deities, uh, such as the deities of the morning, etc. The general theme is to beseech to these elements for victory against the enemies. Now, victory against the enemies, full of, full of conflict. And we are trying to find peace. And we are trying to, and again, I had decided not to be critical and I do not intend to, I do not want to offend or disrespect any, anyone else because the, the essence of our, 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 our durus and our talks is to understand the Qur'an al-Kareem, not about criticizing other religions. <clears throat> but here, we, we look at it, I loud uh, agony, the chosen priest, God, minister of sacrifice, the hotel, lavishest of wealth, Worthy is agony to be praised by living as by ancient seers, he shall bring hither with the gods. So here, agony is doing things to gods. And agony is dictating what God's going to do. And that is very offensive to Muslims and to anyone who believes in God. And anyone, so it is something, um, it is something that, that is there as, as a text and uh, something that is, respected and revered by a large group of people. And this is the, the, the holy book that they have. Uh, so it, it, it is there, and they, they, but, but then again, if you compare this, it's, it's, it's very difficult to, 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 to say 
to carry out a comparison between Surah Al-Fatiha and Rig Veda, in, in what we have in the opening chapter of Rig Veda, is because, uh, because Surah Al-Fatiha is monotheistic. There, one being is praised, Almighty Allah Azza wa The focus is entirely on Him. Here, I don't even know how to compare it, because there, there are, a number of deities are, are there that are followed, and only one has been chosen. And the, and the experts from Hindu religion would have their reasons for it. But for us, when we look at it from Surah Al-Fatiha, from, from a Muslim perspective, we find that Surah Al-Fatiha is very focused. It teaches you focus and you do, there's no tension in it. You're not compromising on anything. You're focusing at the main goal and that's where, where, where it leads you to. And I thought that we should include something from, from, the, from the Buddhist religion. But Buddhist religion, the idea of the creator is absent. There the focus is on nirvana, the enlightenment of the mind. And that is said to be no end and the have, has no end and the phases just shift and you go higher and higher and higher and there's no end to it. So when the, when the, when the idea of God is absent there and the focus is on, all, all on nirvana and that, that kind of enlightenment, even if in order to get enlightenment, if you go to Surah Al-Fatiha, we looked at it. It gives you so much peace. There's so much focus in it centrality of life on one being that you have to focus everything originates from him so he is your goal he's your ideal he's he's that that you want to get closer to and that is the almighty allah azza wa jal. may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding and then we could we could even have looked at uh, sikhism but sikhism is a very very young uh, faith and and it only started about three three centuries ago um so and it's it is it was viewed as as an offshoot of somewhat Hinduism and somewhat Islam. Um, so rather than bringing that into in, in, in here, I thought it's better and also uh, I was mindful of the time as well. Um, this was a, a small attempt to, for, for, which, to, to, to help you as students of the Qur'an al -Kareem appreciate what Allah has given to you in, in the form of Surah Al-Fatiha. From tomorrow, inshallah, we'll continue with with, with, with our theme and tomorrow inshallah we'll start Surah Al-Baqarah May Allah Azza wa Jalla grant us the understanding and may he give us the tawfiq Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen